Hi, I'm here with Ray Antrobus today. Ray's a performance poet and he's going to talk to us a bit about working in schools. Hello, Ray. Hello. Hello. Um, could we kick off if you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in performance poetry? How did you come to it? Cool. Uh, well, um, of course, my name is Raymond Antrobus. Uh, I'm born and bred in Hackney, East London. I went to school there, grew up there, everything. And um, I guess uh, background of performance poetry, I was completely unaware of spoken word and performance poetry until I was about 20 years old and I went traveling and was in Ohio. So I went to America for seven months and on that trip, walked into a bar, there was some open mic going on and I saw a man on stage reading a poem and that really inspired me and I saw that and I was just like, I do that anyway kind of thing. I do something like this. So I needed to see that example and um, then I came back to London and researched about you know where the performance poetry was happening and straight away I found uh, Poetry Slam and so I became very involved in doing Poetry Slam. I went to the Farago Poetry Slam and um, won a few of those slams and that really encouraged me to pursue well, yeah, slam poetry. And tell us a little bit about what you're doing at the moment at Goldsmiths, your, your course. Okay. Yeah. So um, I have enrolled to study uh, an MA in spoken word education and as part of the writer teacher MA. Um, and I'm working with a man from Chicago called Peter Kahn. I first met Peter in 2010 when I went to, did a little t poetry tour. And um, I ended up in Chicago, where I did a few shows out there, and then I got asked to come into a school, a Chicago high school, where I met Peter. And it was the first time I'd ever walked into a classroom and seen like a hundred kids in there just writing poetry. And as soon as I walked into that room and I saw how many kids were there, and it was after school, so they're there on their own accord. And Peter introduces me as a slam poet from London, give it up, Ray Ranchibus. And as soon as I walk in, I've got a whole queue of kids, poems in hand. <laughs> so I say, show me your poem, show me your poem. And I'm just looking at all of these poems, like, really good, maybe you can, uh, yeah, yeah, you can work on this. And yeah, that, that was really inspiring, especially considering I haven't said at any point that I'm into workshops or in the, into education or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just like, you're a poet, handle this. And um, yeah, so when I came back, to London, I then actually got a bit more involved in workshops and that kind of pushed me out mm -hmm. to do that. So then um, this opportunity came up to enrol in the uh, MA programme and it was funny because I don't have any, I've got like three GCSEs, I didn't go to college, left school at 16. Um, I thought I would just try my chances, try my luck, showed up to an interview and just basically told them all I know about poetry you will have learned about spoken word and it was in I was in a situation where the professors were literally like writing down the things I was saying writing down the books that I'd read like oh I didn't know this mm. so it's like oh wow okay so it, it was yeah it just kind of led to me being accepted on the program and it kind of testimony to the other ways into education yeah. that there are so that's, that's and so the MA that you're doing is about training you as a performance poet to work in school. Yes. So how does that work? How does that work? Well, I mean, I guess poets have been going into schools for a long time. That's no new thing. But I guess poets have, or artists in general have always been going into school as kind of uh, the outsider, self-employed creative. Mm -hmm. So there's always been a boundary really between teacher and artists in that environment. Sometimes a conflict, um, sometimes not. But I reckon with this MA, it's, it's, it's given us actually part of teacher training, mm -hmm. which has kind of enabled us to understand more about the teaching position, the official teaching mm -hmm. position. Um, and basically it's like, we get put into these classrooms and I, I don't know, it's, it's odd. I'd, I'd never been left alone in a classroom before until this project. So now mm -hmm. I'm actually, I am left alone a few times and uh, I don't know if that's because 
they hear, oh, MA mm -hmm. teacher, mm -hmm. okay, I, I trust you right off the bat. I can walk out the classroom and leave you with my kids. I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. if, if that's something, but um, yeah, I think I myself, I'm, I'm just learning a lot from that. Yeah. On a particular perspective. And is it, uh, you, just, you just mentioned that poets and, and artists uh, uh, have a long history of going into schools and doing workshops, but it's kind of usually maybe for a day or morning, mm. but what you're doing is aiming towards having a longer relationship yes. with, with kids in school. Yes. So you will be there for maybe um, a few months, ideally. Yeah, I mean, I'll, the aim is actually that I'll be there, I'll be in a school. Uh, four days a week um, with year seven, eight and nine and I really am looking forward to having my own classroom and developing the kind of relationship that teachers develop with their mm -hmm. class in the way that it's not just, it's just too easy to just come into a classroom, know you have one hour and to just like not worry too much about any kind of long term goals so I won't be coming back Mm. It's it's very kind of it's all oh, right, guys. We've got an hour list. Write some poems. Here's some ideas. What do you think? But like with these kids, I'm coming back to them every week, and seeing that progression mm. is <laughs> is actually quite moving. In in the same way that there are certain classes I've been in, in the first say two three classes, chaos, madness, and then by the like sixth seventh lesson, we're in there. After six seventh week. We're starting to see a shift in the dynamic of the classroom and it's usually I've noticed after after like we do like this open mic in class open mic where the, where the students get up and they share their work and I've had in class open mics where a kid has read a poem that has been so moving half the class have cried wow. and when that happens and you see how supportive and how mature actually a lot of the students suddenly become and they're like yeah like really encouraging each other like that the, the, the shift of the dynamic of the classroom from that point on mm. is is beautiful mm. because then from that i don't know it's, it's it's suddenly like they they start respecting their ideas and their opinions a bit more and they start trusting their own ideas a bit more because a lot of them were very a lot of the kids were very reluctant to open up in their poetry in the early days and again it's about that trust it's like it's, it's okay you can put yourself out there and no one's gonna mock you mm -hmm. you you're, you're, you're mm -hmm. safe we're gonna applaud that we're gonna we're gonna hold that in high esteem and um i think that's that's been a very powerful thing transformative thing mm -hmm. to see in the classroom yeah okay so going back to your experience in schools at the moment mm -hmm. right um what have been the main challenges for you as a as a poet coming in to the school system, mm -hmm. what's, what's been the most difficult thing? Oh, the most difficult thing. I guess one of the, the first thing that comes to mind is the idea of being in a classroom and breaking down to students the idea that all we are asking of you is your opinion and your thoughts and that there's no right or wrong. Right in a way that they're in an environment where they're constantly being tested and there's always this right or wrong answer and there's a fear of being wrong mm -hmm. and we are not, we exist outside of that we're like right look here's an idea what do you think and what do you feel and in the first few sessions generally again with a very a quiet classroom kids are very much like I don't know how can you not know? I know you think something or feel something. Mm. Well, okay, well, there's this time where uh, I will talk and you'll get the most amazing, beautiful story out of them sometimes. <laughs> but then there's this other obstacle, which is the writing of that. And so it's interesting how there are students who really like to talk and can talk, but don't want to write. Mm -hmm. it's all, uh, because I think there's this thing in their mind that says, if I write, if I'm sitting down and I'm doing this, then I'm working, mm -hmm. and I don't really want to work, you know. So it's like challenging those ideas that are like set in stone in a lot of young minds uh, is is difficult. But I really see how having a poet in the classroom who's aware of that challenge 
and working towards that is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And I definitely see that we have made some really positive impacts with a lot of kids. And of course, there is still a lot of ongoing progress to be made. I mean, we've been in the school now for three months, maybe a bit more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but like still the impact that we've, I think we've made in that time is, is, is inspiring me, you know.